Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. It's Growing in Grace. I'm Joel Brzezinski. Mike Kapler is with me. Thank you for joining us. Growing in Grace, kind of uh, an informal little chat here between me and Mike, and uh, happy to have you, uh, our listener, along with us as well. We've been doing this for uh, quite some time now. You know, just being able to sit down and chat about the grace of God during all these years, just 15 minutes at a time, what a treat this is for me, and uh, I know you'll enjoy doing this as well, Cap. Well, I do, Joel, and maybe what we ought to do this time is get right into what we want to talk about, and then if we have some time left over, we can dink around at the end, because we always seem to run out of time here lately. We've been talking about New Covenant giving, Joel. You know, we spent some time in 2 Corinthians 9 last week. I just want to return there quickly again. Paul said this, He who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. That's the amplified version. And he who sows generously and that blessings may come to someone will also reap generously and with blessings. The problem here sometimes with prosperity teaching that gets twisted is that they think if I sow more money, I'm going to get more money. When what Paul is really saying here is if you're sowing sparingly, then the blessings that that sowing is going to provide for others is going to be minimized. If you sow bountifully, then the blessings are going to be bountiful. It's not so much what's coming back to you. It's the fruits of your righteousness. That is, the fruits of the act of giving is going to be a blessing to those. The more you give, the more they're going to be blessed. The less you give, the less they're going to be blessed. You're going to reap less of a blessing into the lives of others if you're sowing less. You understand that? Uh, Having said that, Joel, I believe that, that God, through his grace not through anything that we do or plant or work at or any of that, but just through his grace as with uh, eternal life and the blessings that we receive through the finished work of Christ, I believe he desires to supply us because I can't be generous if I'm not supplied. Now, that may be money. It may have even to do with God's love. I can't show somebody else or demonstrate God's love to somebody if I haven't received and understood that for myself. And so there's lots of different things that we can do to bless people with. Money can be a part of that, and that's usually what people think when it comes to giving. I understand that. But I I believe that God does desire for us to prosper. I believe that he does desire for us to have an abundance. That doesn't mean that everybody's walking in that. So for those who do have the resources to sow, you can sow blessings into the lives of others. And that's what Paul was really focusing on focusing in on in Second Corinthians chapter 9. Mm-hmm. And, and as you see in this chapter, obviously they were pooling their resources together, and Paul is asking them to give bountifully because there were saints who were in need. These were real Christians who had needs, and God was going to provide for these needs through some other saints. And so at certain times in our life, it may be true that we're in need, but the point is, and the fact is, is that God is working through other believers, through other saints, to provide for us. And in the end, he does provide for everybody. He does prosper people. And again, it's by his grace. You know, if you're worried about, man, my finances aren't so good, and so I think I need to It's because I haven't been sowing my seeds financially. Or, you know, this ministry on TV is saying, sow your seed into my ministry and you'll reap a thousandfold or whatever they say. You know, you've heard all these things. Um, And so you go ahead and you write out that check and then nothing happens. And and in fact, you write out that check and and you find yourself going into debt because you you think that, you know, by giving this money to this ministry or or whatever, that God's going to repay you and, and provide back. No, forget that notion. And instead, look at what you do have and say, God has provided me with this. I want to bless somebody else with this. So as you do that, that person will be blessed. It's not that you're giving so that God will bless you. 
It's you're giving because God has already blessed you. That's the heart of giving. And again, I think I don't like to rip out j just this one verse, but I think one of the key verses in 2 Corinthians 9, what you have decided in your heart to give, let that be it. Let that be enough. Don't give grudgingly. Don't give because you have to, but give because that's what you've decided to do cheerfully in your heart, for God loves a cheerful giver. Don't give because you, you're expecting something back. That's, that misses the whole point. But give because God, in his grace and in his love, he has provided for you. That's where real giving uh, comes from. It comes from the heart. And, and in fact, that's what all of our life in Christ is about. It's about living from the heart, this new heart that he has given us. He's taken the old one away, the old stony, cold heart, and he's given us a new heart, a new heart of flesh, a new heart that's it's a spiritual heart, you know, that is indwelled by God himself. And as you look to that heart, you will find that you can't help but give. You can't help but give of your time, of your resources, of whatever it is. You can't help but give to others because that's the nature of God that's living in you. Yeah, and and you had something else, too, from uh, 1 Corinthians 2 that we didn't get to last week. Do you have that ready, Joel? Or? Oh, yeah. We were just looking here at 2 Corinthians 9, and, and Paul starts out. I'm just going to repeat this. Paul starts out, Now concerning the ministry to the saints... And it's the same in 1 Corinthians 16.1. He says, now concerning the collection for the saints. <laughs> it's like he has been taught in both of these letters. You've been talking about something else, and now he moves on to, uh, to talking about something else. And in um, 1 Corinthians 16, whatever he's been talking about, he goes on to say, and, and this is a different time. This is a different, it's obviously a different epistle. It's, and it's a different circumstance that Paul's writing about. But he says, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, so you must do also. On the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing up as he may prosper, that there be, be no collections when I come. Well, let me just stop right there. You see, where I've heard this taught, Cap, and I don't know if you've heard the same thing or if our listeners have, but I've heard this taught. See, Paul is saying this is what you must do. Christians, on the first day of the week, let each one of you lay something aside, storing it up as he may prosper, and that gets taught, bring that to the church. See, Paul's teaching to bring money to the church every week, and that's not what Paul's saying. Now, if you, in your heart, want to give money every week, or every two weeks, or every month, or whatever, to a church, that's great. I mean, if that's what you've decided in your heart to do, that's wonderful. But I just want to point out, that's not what Paul is saying here. You know, Paul says, um, he goes on to say, And when I come, whomever you approve by your letters, I will send to bear your gift to Jerusalem. So what he is doing here, he wants to send a gift to the saints at Jerusalem. He wants to help these people out for whatever reason. His letter, I don't think, says what it is, what the need is that's going on with the church in Jerusalem. But what he's saying to uh, the churches of Galatia and also to this church at Corinth that he's writing to, what he's saying is, hey, you guys, in your generosity, I want you to remember every day, every week, on the first day of every week, set some stuff aside as God has prospered you so that when he comes to visit them, he can take up that gift and bring it to Jerusalem. The point here is... This wasn't an ongoing teaching of bringing money to a church every week. This was like a one-time thing where Paul wanted to bring a gift to the church at Jerusalem, and that's what he's instructing them to do. Out of the way that God has prospered them, let's set aside some stuff every week so that I can bring that gift to Jerusalem. It's pretty plain and simple, but I think we kind of read stuff into it or, or take stuff out of it that we shouldn't. Yeah, it's another one of those verses that just gets nothing wrong with giving at church. It's just one of those verses that gets ripped out of context sometime. So in 2 Corinthians 9, 8, Joel, uh, the Bible says, God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always, having all sufficiency in all things, may abound to every good work. That word sufficiency, uh, sufficiency in the Greek it means a perfect condition of life in which no aid or support is needed. Paul was writing to those who were giving at that time. God, through his grace, again, is nothing that we do to earn it. It's just those who are able to receive it as a gift and have that gift of giving to others who are in need. 
I believe that that is where God would like us to be. But there will always be people in need. And it's not about sowing so that you can get more. Yet having said that, you can't give what you don't have. That word also, sufficiency, also means someone who is content with whatever it is that you do have. You know, Joel, um, a lot of people say, well, sometimes God gives and God takes away. There's going to be some people who disagree with me when I say this, but I, I don't believe that. You know where people get that from? Job said that, not God. Job said a lot of things that weren't right. Mm-hmm. You remember the book of Job at the end? He had to repent, and Job said, I uttered things which I did not understand. And he repented, and after all of that, he was blessed with even more than what he had when the whole mess started. I don't believe Job was a righteous man. Well, it says it right there. You know, we get so we get so messed up between the two covenants. There's no contradictions in the Bible, Joel. Job is probably one of the oldest books in the Bible. Mm-hmm. Before the law, probably even before Abraham, the Bible clearly tells us, quoting the old covenant uh, in Romans, there is none righteous, no, not one. Job wasn't righteous. Now, if he was uh, living before the law, he hadn't had sin charged to his account yet. So he could have been considered righteous at that time if he hadn't been charged with sin because the law had not been given yet. My point is this. God is not against you. He is on your side. He is for you. I believe he wants to supply us through his grace with abundance of all good things. I don't think he's the one who's the taker. I think he's a giver, and I think that part of his nature is now a part of ours through Christ. He is for you. He's on your side. Having said that, He desires to move through you in the area of giving. And again, it doesn't necessarily, as we talked about in the past couple of programs, it doesn't necessarily mean it's about how much, how many dollars you're giving. It may not even have anything to do with money, but that's a part of the new nature that's within you. And so we shouldn't shy away from it. We shouldn't get frustrated with somebody has a need or is asking for money. And I'm not just talking about ministries who are using the offering bucket as a manipulation tool. But uh, we we shouldn't run away from giving. I want to encourage you in that way. Yep, and I think you said it right, um, you know, talking about that's our nature, the nature of God. We've become partakers. You know, we get to partake in the nature of God. God's not stingy. He doesn't do anything half-heartedly. And so as we grow in grace, and again, each one of us is in a different place on our own journeys, which is another reason why I don't think it's good to put an arbitrary figure on any any of this stuff. But as we grow in grace and as we understand the generosity of God and how he has already blessed us, and I think you, you hit on a good word there, the sufficiency, and as we become content with what we already have, I think that's a key to prosperity, being content with what we already have. And we'll find that we're able to be more generous, you know, even if we can't give necessarily what other people give. If, you know, if we're content with what we have, then what we what we give is going to be out of generosity. And uh, you can't help but give cheerfully that way. Well, anyway, hey, Cap, this has been a great several weeks here on Growing in Grace, talking about something we don't talk about a whole lot tithing and giving but next week we're going to start talking about the differences some of the differences between the old covenant and the new covenant we'll start talking a little bit about what the gospel is when somebody says the gospel what ideas do you get what is the gospel so we'll in the next few weeks we'll be talking about some of that stuff so come on back next week as we talk more about growing in grace this has been growing in grace with mike kapler and joel brzezinski Heard weekly on Gracewalk Internet Radio and other online sources around the world. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.